Hello and welcome to Stupid Ancient History with Midgley and Taylor and our expert, non-expert and special guest, James, Lord High Commander of the Science Cupboard, first of his name and knower of nothing. Hello. I forgot that was coming. It surprised me. <laughs> I never forget that that's coming, James. Uh, as always, we're wearing togas. The sun is shining, even though it's very cold. And today we're going to look at the establishment of the New Republic in Rome. <laughs> Previously on Stupid Ancient History, we've been looking at the various aspects of the rule of Lucius Tarquinius Superbus. And none of them were that good. Yeah. <laughs> and how his tyranny in Rome and his patchy military record caused some significant complaints amongst the Roman people. Basically, killing politicians, turning everyone into forced labourers, and started wars that lasted a mere 200 years. Got people a little bit mad. I wonder why. Yeah, I don't know what they're complaining about. It seems all right to me. <laughs> it seems absolutely fine. So I take that over 2020 slash 2021. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you just had well, to bring us down. It's exciting. <laughs> but it seems the final straw for the Romans was the brutal rape of Lucretia by Superbus's third son, Sextus. Just in case anyone wasn't paying attention, the prospect of him as future king was not something anyone wanted. I guess particularly not the women of Rome were yeah. that keen on uh, Rapey Rapey being in charge. Is that his name? Yeah. Rapey Rapey. <laughs> and anyway, so led by Brutus, nephew of Superbus himself, an armed gang of citizens took power and locked him out of the city. It's a so bit anticlimactic. They just change the Just you. <laughs> Good riddance to bad rubbish, though, James, don't you think? Sexist. You Sexist guys come up and say they did. He did. Which is good. So they've now kicked out the king. Yeah. Really boringly. Just He's shit. gone. It's, uh, I was hoping for more. But anyway. Uh, but we're still talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's about to happen? <laughs> Sharp as ever there, James, with your well, you know, summing up. There's a, there's you a did pack. wonder why you were here today, didn't you? I, I, yeah, I thought we were finished. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. To be fair, we always wonder why you're here. My joke. <laughs> How dare you? You ask me. <laughs> anyway, before this gets worse, <laughs> um, you are, of course, of course right. Um, yeah, of course. You are, of that. course, right. <laughs> with the kicking out of the Tarquins, Rome now needs a new way of ruling itself. And after everything that had gone before, they were in no mood for swapping out one king for another, no matter how good the candidate could possibly be. Okay, so they're done with single yep. rules. Yeah. So what do they do? Just invent something? Yeah, so, so it would seem. <laughs> they just come up... Just like that. <laughs> they just come up with democracy. Mm, well, the, the Greeks that, kind of invented it. They yeah. that already existed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, they come up with Roman... Democracy. Please tell me it doesn't involve a census. Well, or an interaction. <laughs> so it seems Olivia isn't particularly helpful at this point. No, he gets a bit confused. Possibly due to age, do we think, maybe? Pro possibly due to the fact that he doesn't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Realistically, right, I mean, okay. he basically suggests that Brutus, the guy who overthrew mm -hmm. Superbus, and the other leading citizens establish a government partly through need. Because they've got rid of the kings. But also, of course, they're super smart and awesome. Of course they are. And could just make up a complex system of government just like that. They come up with the best system. Absolutely. Uh, I can kind of feel this coming. You're going to explain <laughs> to me how this government worked to me. You're going to explain to me how this worked, or possibly doesn't. Yeah, well, we won't lie to you. That is exactly what's coming. Sorry. Okay. So... Uh, I've got to be honest, this sounds really dull. <laughs> I came here for murder and prostitutes and war and stuff. Yeah, um... We'll do our best to make it interesting, James. You never know, there might be some more comedic voices coming. Right, Dear okay. God. We'll see. So, the first thing we should point out about this new system of government is that the power was almost entirely held within the former Senate and the patrician classes. So, effectively, leaving the plebeians with little or no say in how Rome was run. So this this kind of grand new form of government is just run by the same people who ran the old one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. What, what about the equestrians? Where do they fit into this? Oh, they've been bumped up. Oh, oh they're, they're, yeah. they're now just, mm -hmm. they've just gone to a dual system again. But the plebs are still getting stuffed. Right, okay. <laughs> so this new Senate-based government also has other problems at first, too. Yeah, namely that Superbus had killed off a load of the senators, so they needed some more. Okay. Uh, luckily, Servius before Superbus and Tully had him kind of smeared across Rome. Um, 
He'd established the Equites, this new tier of senator, who then stepped up into this power vacuum. But everyone had to be a wealthy landowner. Right. So, so ulti ultimately, he's still keeping the plebs out because they've got yeah, these are property if, if, qualification if you, if and you, it's quite a lot. If you're rich enough to be in our club, you could be in. If not, yeah. get get back in the field, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. Seems fair. <laughs> Uh, so we've got a load of new senators on the block then. Yeah. Uh, were they just hanging around looking for work? Like, <laughs> what were they up to? <laughs> Anyone need a senator? Yeah. Um, sort of, but also not quite. Um, Livy says this. The Senate had been thinned by the murderous cruelty of Tarquin and Brutus. Next care was to strengthen it by selecting some of the leading men of equestrian rank to fill the vacancies. By this means, he brought it up to the old number of 300. Then he adds, The new members were known as conscripti. The old ones retain their name of patres. Okay, so 300 is, is that, was that the number? That was the number. It, it, is that, is that kind of like our MPs? Do each have a, like, area they're in charge of? Or is it just nope, a number just they just a number. On? Right, so one guy ruling things wasn't working, so they've yep. got to 300 instead. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Does it sound like that's going to work? Well, no, I mean, it's not just 300 old fellas sitting around arguing about stuff. Um, according to Livy, this has a very, very beneficial effect. This measure had a wonderful effect in promoting harmony in the state and bringing the patricians and plebeians together. Right, okay. That sounds like nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you'd be right to be sceptical. I mean, the fact that the plebeians had no say at all in whatever happened to so them. So there's not like a... There's, there's no elections for a senator. You just are a you senator. Just, well, you get chosen by the so other the, senators. The other ones. Your mates, basically. Yeah, basically. So, yeah, the fact that the plebs are basically sat outside going, what about those? Um... It's not really harmony between the groups. No. And this is one of the key themes that we're going to keep coming back to. Because funnily enough, they don't like it. No, and it's <laughs> certainly not the freedom and liberty they thought that they were going to get, no. is it? Just no. what what is the kind of distribution in the populace of Rome like? I, I presume the plebs massively outnumber yeah. the, uh, the patricians. patricians. Yeah. It's three quarters to a quarter, right, maybe. Okay. Maybe even smaller. Again, we're working with Livy, so who knows? <laughs> Not <him>. seven and <laughs> four and a half. Right, so we've now got 300 rich blokes yep. who own land yep. in charge of everything. Yep. No king. No king. Who's in charge of them? Or are they just <laughs> self govern? <laughs> but, no. Because this, this sounds like more nonsense. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it, well, it would be, but as we mentioned before, the patricians seem so oh, so super smart uh, that they'd already come up with a system of government. Which yeah, this. Is, <laughs> yeah, which is suspiciously like the government of the late Republic, which was a few hundred years before. Right, okay. So they're just taking what worked before? Basically, Livy looked at the late Republic and went, yeah, they did that from the start. Yeah. So you're ready for this then? Go, yeah, go for it. So... One of the things these Romans seem to be completely stressed about all the time, and one of the key things to do with their system of government, is this return of tyranny. Yeah. Can't imagine why that's so, going to cause so, a problem. No. <laughs> At this point, does, tyr does tyranny mean like the way we'd use it, or is it just still a word for single ruler? It's tyranny as in superbus. Right, okay. When we, when we say tyranny now, think superbus. superbus. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it also seems that Livy himself is not 100% behind this idea, and that he thinks maybe this system of government was a bit too limiting, um, this fear of tyranny, and he chips in with... I think that they went to unreasonable lengths in devising safeguards for their liberty, in all, even the smallest points. Okay. So, so they're just looking after themselves? Yeah. They, it, they're making sure they've got enough checks and balances to make sure no tyranny can ever happen ever again. But within this very niche group? Yeah who will look after their own interests. Yeah. Does it seem like it's a million miles apart, I'll be honest? Yeah, but there's no king. There's no king. So, the first step in making sure no one becomes basically Superbus Mark II um, is making sure that there isn't a single leader at any time. And then introduce a whole range of others who can chip in and stop anything or anyone going too nuts. Yeah. 
So at the top of this pile, um, the Romans are ruled by two consuls. So they were basically the leaders of Rome. Uh, and they were in charge of the army and they were given the, the great task of protecting Rome and seeking glory. But okay. <laughs> they weren't allowed to mess with lawmaking, taxation and other important day-to-day -day functions. Like all the dull things. Yeah, basically. Okay. <laughs> so all the things basically that Superbus had used to make everyone miserable, they weren't allowed to get involved with. Right, okay. Um, but they did retain the service of, service, yeah, services even of the lictors, those royal bodyguards. I mean... To look after them. To be fair, they've not done a great job on the last few kings. No, they, they hadn't, they? no. <laughs> Here, here's some guys who are so pretty are the, rubbish at their job. Are these consul chosen from the Senate? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's... Really, 298 senators at a time and two... Two consuls. Two who consuls. are starting to look a bit like kings with a royal bodyguard. Right, yeah. Uh, how do they... Sh is it a complete decision? Does one have authority over some things and one the other? Well, again, it, 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 it's vague. Right, uh, okay. best. The idea is that... The important thing is that the consuls, there's two of them, so one could block the other's decision. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's assuming that they were both working on the same... Evil scheme. <laughs> so the, yeah, there's. You're all right, there, Jay. No, nope. <laughs> Taylor broke me again. <laughs> so anyway, so presuming these two don't work in cahoots together, this should work fine. Mm -hmm. Um, for their evil schemes. Not said it as good as me. No. Um, but they're also limited in how long they can be in office because they're elected yearly. Can they be re-elected? Right. So they can. They can be elected more than once, mm -hmm. but. You can't be elected for continuous years. So you have to have a year so off in like, between. Well, how, I know this may, may be jumping ahead. How often did it descend to basically it's a job share, one year, <laughs> one off with like two um, people? It, it's not unimaginable, is it? No, It's the no. same way, presuming that both consuls aren't working on the same kind of scheme. An even <laughs> scheme? Yeah, but... Sorry, you caught me by surprise then. I wasn't ready. So yeah, the... the there's pros and cons. There's systems to stop tyranny, okay. but you've already just found three loopholes in it. But also, yeah. and obviously this is not the Republic, this is when you get further on, but what you do find as well is that a lot of the time you'll get like, people that are related. Yeah. So fathers well, and sons uh, or brothers was... that both act as consul, or you'll get like someone that's more important in their adopted son, and they both, you know, both act as consul at the same time. So. Yeah, okay. Keeping so, it in the family, basically. Were these, even even I know they've been levelled up to being part of the patrician, were these generally chosen from the old of kind of Yeah, the, not, these not, were usually... Uh, not the, do you call them conscripts? Or? Conscripti. Conscripti. Yeah, they, these are the traditional wealthiest, most powerful, can buy the most votes, Romans. Yeah, okay. So we've already seen pretty big cracks in their new glorious system. Shh. <laughs> So we're at the point now, we've got 300 senators. Yep. They pick two consoles yep. from them. Yep. They have a job for the year. Yep. They don't do all the boring stuff that the king nope. <laughs> used to do. Right, okay. I'm on board. What now? Come on down the censors. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you doing? The censors. Ah, okay. <laughs> Could you not get so it? That, from that, that was so much like a game show host, I couldn't understand <laughs> what words you said. <laughs> so, the censors. Um, these are members of the government who are in charge of the daily running of Rome, the taxation, the public building works. And of course, the census. More of them. Yep, census yeah. is back. Oh, uh. yes. But in the Republic, the census also determined which social class you belong to, which now also meant they decided who could attend the Senate. So, wait, what? So, <laughs> so they, they go around telling people if they're important enough to be in the Senate? Yep. yep. Right, okay. These people presumably are Can open you see to, how this could be manipulated? These people presumably open to being bribed, etc. <laughs> no, because they're all good and honest Roman men. I don't think that's going to be true. Well. Uh, so, is this a separate thing, or are these still like a subclass of senators? These are, again, taken from the Senate. Right, okay. Um, and, but they're elected... Every five years. Okay. But you didn't have anything as fancy as the Litzes. No. Right, okay. So they serve for five years. Yep. 
Uh, but they basically get to choose who's in their club. Yep. This already seems <laughs> wrong ex- again. <laughs> but they can they can serve for five years instead of one year yeah. because they're not as powerful. Yeah. Arguably, so. but you could you could make the argument that they're kind of setting. Yeah, you, know, you could pick all the senators who are going to choose what you want, do what you like, and that's the only people in government, surely. Well, they've got to have the money, but yeah, basically. Give me like jobs for the boys. Yeah, yeah basically. So yeah. this is this is. Remind me how this is different from having a king and being a t- tyrant. Because you can get rid of them all, and there's more of them. But they're not going to, are they? Well, I mean, the the whole idea of having the consuls with one year offices and the others having longer. Basically, the more important you are, the shorter, the shorter your time shorter. in office. Yeah. Is, is there anything shorter than a consul's one year? Oh yes. Oh, there is. Yes. Oh wow. <laughs> but more about that later. Okay, I know, I know I keep doing this, but I'm, no. just trying to, I'm just trying to keep score. So, 300 senators, yep. two consoles, yep. the censors. Yep. So, it, is that it? Are we done? Because this, this is all getting quite complicated. Yeah, for their, it for is. Super streamlined, most effective term of government ever. Um, but, kind of like we've seen recently with our own government. What happens? At, like, is this not a case of like too many cooks? Like they could all there's too many voices. They'll never get anything ah, done. See where you're going. Yeah. So luckily, the super smart patricians they've already thought of that. Yeah. So deciding actions during a war by committee was never going to be a good idea. Okay. No. Only in war. Well, yeah. so in the event of an emergency like war or plague. Or Netflix crashing and not working. <laughs> yeah. Don't talk about um, plagues. The Senate would appoint a dictator. That's generally not a good thing. <laughs> it's not as bad as you think. Okay. No. So the dictator in this sense um, was an emergency position given um, when an individual would replace the consuls and have ultimate power over Rome and its armies just to sort the problem out. Like a king. Or a dictator. <laughs> <laughs> in... So we make a temporary king when things really go wrong. <laughs> Yeah, in theory, yes, but the position could only be held for six months. Because the more powerful you are, remember the shorter your term right, in office. Right, so that, that's the person who has less than a console. Yeah, and mm. if you hadn't fixed the problem in six months, the position was voted on again. Okay. Likely with a different dictator, because if you hadn't fixed the problem in six months, basically what have you been doing? So, like you said, the consoles can't go consecutively. Yep. Could a dictator go consecutively? In theory, yes. Yeah. So it's just like <coughs> I'm not seeing the problem. It's just not sorted yet. Give me six more months, lads. Yeah. The uh, but the idea is every six months you can't just declare yourself dictator for life. I mean, I know someone does. Someone do. does. <laughs> 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 yeah. Someone Un- does. Un- until you do. That doesn't end too well for him. No. But yeah, the idea is short term of office, fix the problem. When the problem's fixed, back to normal. So presumably, did they ever? Make someone dictate to sort out this pesky 200 year war that's still going on. We're getting to that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But just to make sure dictators couldn't just rip up the rule book and do what they wanted, the Romans decided on another position as well in times of crisis. Like another dictator. The master of the half, James. (laughs) (laughs) What? <laughs> <laughs> you really can't just say that and leave it. I mean, are you sure? <laughs> presumably, Rome has more than one horse to begin with. Well, Master you... of the horse. Master of the horse. It's a special horse. Well, okay. it, it's not. Um, <laughs> it is two horses. What? No, it's not. It's actually the name comes from <laughs> the name comes from the three horses. <laughs> right now, we're being silly now. Now, the name comes from the position this person holds at the head of the growing Roman cavalry in battle. Okay, so, so it's not so, a horse. But I say, why isn't it a master of horses? So, yeah, the dictator being in charge of the foot soldiers is the biggest part of the army. And he's in charge of the horsey part of the army. Right, okay. So, is, is that just to make sure he doesn't have complete control over everything? Yeah, basically. I mean, he's also only in position for six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and the main... Are these, do these six months marry up? Yeah, they're right, on at okay. the same time. And their main role 
besides riding around on horses was to keep an eye on the dictator and make sure they weren't abusing their power. Unless, they? unless, of course, they were in on what the dictator had planned. Would this? What kind of scheme would this be? An evil <laughs> scheme! Right, okay, so... You can have a dictator and a master of horse. In emergencies, in or emer- wars. In emergencies, or like a 200-year war that's currently going on. Yeah, but... Um, Do they ever get round to sorting that out? Well, I mean, they don't introduce the dictator and the master of horse for that war. Right, okay. Because, to be fair, it's now just a bit of a half-hearted war. Yeah, it was more just kind of giving each other nasty looks and shouting abuse. You right, know, like okay. we do on a day-to-day basis in school. That's, that's just for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, with the 200-year the war against the Volshi, they stick with the consoles, and it's only when something... Like really so, kicks so, off that they press the button and call in the dictator and the master of all. <laughs> Can you imagine him just coming out of like a cupboard, can't you? It's like a it's bat signal. <laughs> right, okay. L- lots of checks just but being checked by your mates, basically. Shh. <laughs> right, I'm becoming exhausted <laughs> by this now. So... Come on, you use all your hands, James. I've not got enough fingers for all these losers. Right, so we've got two consoles, yep. some sensors, yep. a dictator and master of horse, like sometimes, yep. and then 300 senators. Yep. Right, so you've not actually th- told me what they do. What do you mean, Senate? The Senate, yeah. So you said in times of times of emergency, like, you know, they make, they elect a dictator. Mm-hmm. What they do in the rest of the time. <laughs> Good question, James. <laughs> yeah, um, the 300 senators, other than just being a bunch of old fellas sat in a room rowing at each other, mm-hmm. um, they're generally put in charge of things like the treasury. Okay. But they also act like a council to advise the consuls on any major decisions. That's a very big council. It is. Um, yeah. But hey-ho. <laughs> uh, okay. They also have important roles in kind of planning the development of the city and the law. So almost all senators were retired magistrates and held their role for life. What? Yeah. (laughs) Right, so there's no term of service for a senator. Nope. That's just a role for life. Yeah, Yeah. you you are a senator. You're part of the senatorial class. Right, okay. So. This is sounding worse and worse the more (laughs) you're explaining it to me. So they're not just sitting around rowing the whole time. Because that, that, that's the very classic thing I always think yeah. of from TV and film, is like these very old men shouting at each other. <laughs> well, that's why they're old, because they're not allowed to just, like, sack it off, basically. <laughs> could I mean, die. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's quite an extreme way of sacking Suppose, it off, isn't yeah. it? Like, I think they're supposed to go to Rome, aren't they, is it, so many times a year? Yeah. Or at least once a year to go to a senatorial meeting. Oh, so they're not all based in Rome at this point? At this point they are, but later on. Later right, on, when spread their wings. Right, okay, <coughs> when, when Rome and Italy kind of blur yeah. lines. Yeah, so like we said earlier, all the senators, they have to be landowners, because mm-hmm. um, basically they'd have to support themselves. There's no wage coming with being a senator. So did that kind of mean, because you said like the, the, the equestrian class, they were originally on a horse. Mm. Did that divide them? Like, if you were, wait, we should have a horse but not land. Oh, yeah. Which, where were you going to keep your horse? No, just outside. Cupboard. <laughs> just, just, just. Tie it's him not up. so much that the horse is the fact that you, well, you've got a horse, so you're an equestrian. It's more that that just enabled another group of people to kind of come into the government yeah. within Rome. Right. Okay. So people you, had you, enough land to put a horse on. You senators okay. and you. Not pa- that big. Yeah, your patricians. <laughs> Like the landed aristocracy, so yes, mm. they would have a horse, but it's Many probably horses. because it's been yeah passed down and they earn all their money from not horse racing, obviously, but like land yeah. and stuff like that. Whereas the equestrians have like earned their dosh, right, so okay, they okay. can buy a horse to and become an equestrian. Yeah. So yeah, okay. so basically the the senate, the equestrians, the conscripted, they all had to be wealthy enough to be able to pay for the. The privilege of being a senator because you didn't get a wage and again this means all decision making is firmly rooted within the patrician classes not the plebs no what do they get bugger all (laughs) so that really clear and not at all complicated system of government established i mean it does raise some key issues some of which you may already have alluded to there james yeah so (laughs) 
I would say the first one is the fact that the early Republic is very similar to the later Republic. And then even though obviously we're not doing about emperors, a lot of these things kind of even follow on into the emperors. So you still get consuls and things like that even later on. It's like, almost like Livy doesn't actually know yeah, what the early Republic was. He went, it's just oh, kind of that thinking, there. Yeah. Uh, well, it maybe was a bit like that, and maybe these parts of this that were in there as well, so I just kind of put it all together and... Yeah, I, w- I was wondering, like, we very often come back to like when he's writing it. Yeah. Like, Augusta still keeps the Senate, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. So he, he Put in their place. Put in their place. So he doesn't want to completely say the Senate wasn't fit for purpose, no. etc. He's like... Oh, they're, they're, they're all right. They were doing a good job because it works. It's very much like what we've got now. So yeah. don't have a go at it. If you yeah, look at other much. ancient sources, so if you look at like Tacitus, he calls it a facade of... Um, Farce, Republic, of, No, he says it's a, a facade of republicanism. It's that, this it sounds idea, it, yeah. It's this idea that, yes, it's there, but actually it's, it's not got any power anymore. But you still have the Senate... You still have consuls, you still have the equestrian class, you still have the lictors. So there's loads of things that are from this period that are even there in like the imperial period, covering right the way through to the Flavians, even like after the Julio Claudians. A lot of it doesn't change. Right, okay. That's Why what, would it? What, it's such a good system with no what, what's, what's the time scale on that? Well, that's all AD, mm. really, and we're looking at significantly BC, right, about okay. four or five hundred. BC so right oh, it sticks around for a bit. Yeah, I mean, the, again, this is the problem. It's a very, very complicated system, um, especially when you've got two systems for peace and war, mm. um, which e- lends even more weight to this idea that Livy's description of how it magically pops up is a bit too. Yeah, this this doesn't really seem to be like you know a bit too much of a fairy tale. Yeah, doesn't really seem like any trial and error. It just yeah. comes out fully formed. One day, superbus is gone. What do we do? Oh, I've got a great idea, lads. <laughs> um, but yeah, the problem as well is it is quite complex. But that's one of the key points to it. Well, it seems to miss out an awful lot of infighting, doesn't it? Whenever you go, within, if you're looking at Roman history, whenever you go from a period where you've got one kind of ruling dynasty and go into another one, it's normally in the, in the middle, there is a period of complete chaos where everyone is vying to get power. So it, it seems quite odd that you go from having such a strong ruler to everyone then just going, okay, that's yeah. fine. Let's just start to set this completely different way of doing it. And also the fact that you've still got elements that are similar. So you've still got a dictator. You've still got things like that console. But then you've also like looking towards democracy. So you're thinking, well, is he also thinking of Greece? So is he just taking yeah, there's a big all these different bits and like mashing it how, all together? How similar to the kind of contemporary Greek system is what the what well the at is. the time this is all happening handily it's round about the time when Athens have gone oh do you know what lads democracy that's a good idea right so there's lots of and also don't forget Livy's using basically Greek histories of Rome for his information mm. so there's lots of borrowing and claiming of their own but um, the other thing that's really important is this idea of checks and balances you can see the paranoia this obsession with tyranny even though the system may not be great, yeah. they're doing the best to try and make sure no one person has that much power to become so super bus mark II. I've, I've, I think I've asked this in the past about the other terms like kind of king and mm. tyrant. They originally weren't terrible things. Just no, like they become the perception dominant. of them. When did the dictator kind of turn <laughs> into that? Uh, did it, did Caesar. It, I was going to say, yeah. did it he, kind, Caesar? he kind of spoiled it for everyone. He made himself dictator for life. Yeah. yeah. And they basically just didn't like that idea because he was becoming too much like a king. And everyone else that comes after is very kind of cautious to not accept that title. Yeah. So, like, Augustus will not, like, will not allow himself to be called dictator. The people, people, supposedly, want to call him dictator. Right. But... Augustus says no because it's got such kind of negative connotations. A bit like now. Yeah, well, that's it. Like we we obviously use the word; it means a very bad man, a very specific thing. Think Mussolini and yeah. stuff. I was going to say think mustache normally. That's yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this idea of the people wanting to call him this as well leads us on to the other perennial problem that's going to keep coming back: the plebs. 
The plebs. They have nothing. They have nothing, and they're not happy about it. Uh, again, like how how does that tie into like when it was being written? Because Caesar did a lot for the plebs, didn't he? And he was yeah. quite well liked for it. Well, I don't want to give too much of the story away, James, right? Okay. Because, yeah. Grumpy plebs is coming up. Yeah, that always goes well. Grumpy plebs. So, there you have it, our introduction to the emergence of the new Roman Republic. Thank you for listening. We hope this has been helpful. As always, leave us a comment below. And until next time, goodbye. Bye. Bye.